Okay, so let's start um, for Open Suzonam. So basically, we will try to cover um, what happened since the last Open Suze conference, uh, which means basically one year and a half. So the agenda for today uh, will be the following. Um, I will introduce myself quickly. Uh, then we will have uh, an overview of Open Suzonam workflow. Uh, we'll talk about OBS, OpenQA, um, Tumbleweed, Tumbleweed, and Lip. A little word about the OpenSUSE wiki, uh, related, related to ARM, of course, and the long to-do list. I'm Guillaume Gardet. I'm a member of the OpenSUSE community for years now. Um, I'm reachable uh, with uh, Guillaume at OpenSUSE.org. Um, since two years, uh, I'm engineer at ARM, uh, part of the distro team from the open source software group, and I'm dedicated to SUSE and OpenSUSE. Um, I'm also the member, a member of the OpenSUSE release team, um, and I take care of ARM architectures, which includes uh, AR64, uh, where we have Tumbleweed, Leap, and also jump. Uh, I will talk about jump a little bit later. Um, it covers also ARM v7 with tumbleweed and leap, and we also have ARM v6 in tumbleweed only. Before talking about the uh, open on ARM workflow, um, a brief uh, introduction to the OpenSUSE workflow for Tumbleweed. So all the um, packages are built in factory project. And if you want to submit a new package or an update, you create a submit, re submit request from your own project. And there is some uh, review, automatic or manual, and also some automated testing. Uh, to validate this uh, submit request. If all is green, it goes to factory. And then once uh, factory uh, finished to build, it's, the snapshot is pushed to uh, OpenQA. And if it, all is green, uh, it's pushed to, to the user um, as a Tumbleweed. For ARM, uh, we don't use directly the factory project. We have a sub project, uh, which is uh, OpenSUSE Factory ARM. Uh, and for LIP, we have the same uh, LIP 15.2 ARM sub-project. And in fact, we just reuse all the sources. Um, and if you update something on x86 part, it will be updated uh, on ARM side. And there is just a small overlay uh, to handle uh, the snapshot version and the content of ISO and FTP trees, which can differ from uh, x86. So here you have an example of the, the overlay. So you have some packages uh, only on the ARM side, and you also have inherited packages. Uh, so that's all the sources uh, from x86 project. So uh, if we go back to the ARM side of things, if you want something um, in Tumbleweed for ARM, you need to submit it into factory for x86. So this is the usual submission process to factory. And then factory ARM inherits the sources. And once the build is finished, it's pushed to OpenQA ARM. And if it's green, it's pushed to Tumbleweed ARM on the download server. Since uh, a year and a half, we did not add a uh, build power. Uh, so we are still a bit short for 32-bit ARM build, um, but we managed to, to get things uh, built uh, anyway. We have enough power to build AR64 on time. And uh, we also enabled uh, rings. So this is uh, two sub projects, rings zero, rings one. 
which are um, core packages, which need to be always rebuildable. So we make sure all is green uh, here. Uh, it's enabled since a uh, few weeks now. But we have not enough uh, build power to enable staging. So in, when you submit something to factory, all the checks are done uh, for x86. There is no checks for ARM yet because of lack of build power. And of course, we, we, we fixed a lot of build failures. Here are a few numbers from uh, today. Uh, so you can see that AR64 um, have pretty much the same numbers as uh, x86, 64 bits or 32 bits. Um, for succeeded packages or failed packages or unresolvables, um, that's uh, more or less uh, the same uh, numbers which is very good. If we have um, some people here who, who are maintainers of uh, some OBS projects, um, I ask you to enable uh, ARM build uh, to make sure uh, all is building fine and now and in the future. Uh, so if, if you want to add it, uh, just click uh, repositories on top of your uh, project, add from a distribution, and then you just need to check OpenSUSE Tumbleweed or Factory ARM or lib 152 ARM. Um, the difference between Factory ARM and Tumbleweed is uh, Tumbleweed is a released version, uh, whereas OpenSUSE Factory is a current uh, version built in the project. So Tumbleweed is what users uh, have access to. And on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, so you have uh, x86 architectures, but you also have uh, AR64, but you don't have ARMv6 and ARMv7. On OpenQA side, um, I will have just a brief word uh, on how OpenQA works. So you have um, a server a chart for all architectures with a web interface and API. This server um, holds all the files, so it could be ISO images or hard disk images, also repositories. Um, it's also um, all, the, all the test suites information, uh, so the screenshots uh, uh, you will compare to, um, and the, the test uh, themselves. And this server will control test runs, so it will ask a, a worker to, to start or to stop, and it will store the, the results uh, at the end. And um, around this server, you have multiple machines, uh, which we call workers, and most of them runs uh, multiple uh, virtual machines, uh, so it's using KMU to run tests inside but you also have the possibility to run tests on real hardware. So we we do it for, um, for ARM. I will have a word uh, about it later. And each test run uh, some actions and check if the result is expected uh, or not. So here you have the, the server, uh, which communicates with two workers to start um, OS auto inst uh, software, which will run most of the time KMU, but can also uh, flash some real hardware and power them up and power them down. So here is a very little test. It's just a media check test. So it just starts an ISO. Um, and select a media checked uh, entry on the menu and wait uh, until the, the test complete. Um, if all, all, here, uh, all, all is fine, uh, so you have uh, a past uh, flag, which is green. And you also have the, the time here, which is uh, new since um, early 2020. Uh, 
which can be useful uh, if you have a long test uh, to check which uh, part of the test is taking too long um, and try to, to work on it. On the ARM side of things, uh, it's mainly for AR64. We have few open QA tests for ARM v7 targets in Tumbleweed, but uh, that's, it's only two, two tests. Since uh, fall 2018, um, we have a D05 machine, which is on the, on the picture, uh, which has uh, 64 cores um, with uh, Inos RAM and uh, a big statist, uh, SATA disk, which allow to, to run uh, 16 workers in parallel. So this is for KMU test. But uh, we have added some remote workers. So that means it's not on the same um, network as the uh, OpenQA uh, D05 machine and OpenQA server. So we have a remote Thunder X2 machine. Uh, we also have Amazon machine with uh, A1 and uh, M6, M6G. And we have some workers which are not always available, just uh, booted when we need to, to speed up the test. So there is a Honeycomb LX2K and um, N1 SDP. So all of them uh, runs KMU test and we have uh, real hardware testing. So on Raspberry Pi 2, which is ARM v7, and on Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, which is which are uh, AR64. I took some numbers uh, from today. Um, for Tumbleweed, we we run um, 149 tests plus uh, 70 tests for the kernel part. And I gave you the details um, uh, under. Uh, I would just highlight um, the Justinus OS image uh, tested on Raspberry Pi 2 and Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, the tests on Raspberry Pi 4 are in a, in a separate project because I added them only this week. And I need to check uh, all is green before moving them to, to the normal tumbleweed test. And on Lib15.2, Lib we had um, a lot less tests with only 82 tests. For Tumbleweed and Cubic MicroOS, um, we enabled automated email notification when a new snapshot uh, is released. Uh, so that's very convenient because people are aware of the the new snapshot availability, and also um, what change, what are the main changes uh, in this snapshot. Of course, we fixed a lot of uh, packages. Um, by fixing, I mean uh, at build time in OBS, but also at runtime in uh, OpenQA. We also have new packages. Um, we have a lot of them in uh, machine learning uh, field with TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2, TVM, ARMNN, and, and more. And we also have new systems and new devices supports uh, thanks to the up-to-date kernel and also up-to-date user space software. So for example, we now, we now have lots of Mali GPU support thanks to Lima and Panfrost, Panfrost uh, project. And we also have a uh, new system support thanks to new Contrib. Uh, which is for the Pine phone. So if you have one Pine phone, you can run OpenSUSE on it. And um, we enabled uh, some ARM specific features. Uh, so here you have the, a link to the wiki, uh, to the page ARM architecture support, where we we are trying to to log all, all the features we enabled in Tumbleweed and in Leap. So for example, um, we have the RMVI.1 LSE Atomics uh, features, which is enabled since snapshot 
2020-0602, so back in, in June. Another important feature is MVI.3 pointer authentication. Um, we have the kernel support space, which is enabled since June as well. Uh, and user space, which is still work in progress, but uh, the target is um, October this year, so this month. Uh, so we are not far to, to enable it. For MVI.5, uh, branch target identification, uh, BTI in short. We enabled it in kernel uh, since snapshot 2020-0821, so uh, in August. And for user space, uh, we will enable it uh, at the same time as pointer, pointer authentication user space, so this month, in a few days or weeks. For Leap 15.2, um, how it was built, uh, it, it inherits uh, and rebuilds SLI 15 SP2 packages for some core packages, such as GCC, kernel, or Chemu. And it also inherits and rebuilds uh, Leap 15.1 packages for, for the other one. And um, if some package maintainers want to, they can push updates from Tumbleweed as well. So for Leap 15.2, we fixed a lot of packages, uh, again, um, at build time and uh, for runtime as well. For the future um, uh, Leap, uh, we will use um, the Jump project, uh, which will try to close the gap between OpenSUSE Leap and SUSE Sli. Um, if you didn't uh, attend the, the talk from Lubosch uh, yesterday, uh, you should uh, have a look at this wiki page, uh, which will give you a good overview. But basically, it will get um, SLI 15 SP2 binaries uh, instead of rebuilding them. Um, and it will get uh, package up binaries as well. And we, we will add few packages on top. Um, mainly for branding, but not only. And this, this um, process uh, will support all architectures from SLI. Um, so IR64 is supported by SLI, so there is no problem. But MV7 is not supported by SLI, but was in LIP. So we are not sure yet uh, what to do with MV7 for future LIP. Um, we may drop uh, MV7 support from LIP, or we, we may also rebuild all the packages for MV7. It's still an open topic, so if you have uh, an opinion, please uh, share it. And for the Jump52 project, we also uh, fixed uh, a number of packages. On the wiki side, um, a number of ARM pages have been updated, uh, including portal ARM and some hardware compatibility uh, pages. Um, there is a page on the JoyP, uh, which is uh, a small case uh, used to, to as a demo kit for OpenSUSE, and uh, it includes a, a Raspberry Pi 3. So you can have a look and play with it. It's quite fun. We have new hardware compatibility pages, uh, for example, for the Honeycomb LX2K or for the N1 SDP. And uh, again, I added um, the link to the ARM architecture support uh, page to, to monitor the, the latest features of uh, ARM hardware. And finally, we reach the to-do list. So in the coming soon uh, features, we have uh, pointer authentication and branch target identification in Tumbleweed in the next days. Um, also, we will need to fix soon the D05 machine in OpenQA uh, because we upgraded from lib 15.1 to lib 15.2. And we have a um, problem on, about uh, performances. So we need to, to find why and fix it uh, quickly. 
we need to to improve continuously the the wiki uh, with new information and more importantly uh, up to date information so if you want to help uh, feel free to to edit it we need to improve obs as well um, we need to enable uh, arm build in more developed projects. Uh, that way we can catch uh, build failures uh, early uh, and not when it reaches uh, factory. Uh, we should try to speed up MV7 build as well because it's uh, the current bottleneck, bottleneck which is which slows down the tumbleweed a bit. Uh, so it could be great if we could uh, speed up uh, MV6 and MV7 builds. Uh, on the point QA side, uh, we could add, probably add more IR64 tests. Now uh, we have uh, more hardware. We could try also to extend the general hardware uh, backend, uh, which is the backend used to to test on the on the Raspberry Pi at the moment, uh, so you, we just put up the, the the Pi and connect via SSH and to run test. Uh, so we could add uh, support for HDMI to USB sticks, for example, to to grab um, screen output, and also we could connect uh, a USB gadget to to send mouse and keyboard events. And of course, we we'll need to monitor continuously build failures and test failures and fix them uh, as soon as possible and report and or uh, fix bugs on OpenSUSE the Bugzilla. If you have some systems, uh, could be single board computer or server class, um, feel free to, to reach out and tell us your, if your experience is fine or if something breaks. Most of the time people tell when something breaks, but uh, they don't tell when all is fine. So I'm happy to, to hear some good news as well. Um, we need to update software, add new features. And a good topic also is WSL um, support in OBS for AR64. Uh, so there is a work in progress project uh, in OBS. Uh, it's home, QMG, WSL. Um, so we have already some C and C++ compiler uh, running, but um, we we need to, to fix uh, some packages uh, again. So if you want to help, uh, feel free to, to join us. And to join us, you can use IRC and um, OpenSUSE ARM uh, on, Fre on Freenad. And there is also OpenSUSE ARM at OpenSUSE.org uh, as a mailing list. So if you have questions, we have a few minutes left. Well, you're doing a good job with ARM stuff, so there's that. <laughs> okay, thanks. I mean, it was one of the few, OpenSUSE was, I think, the only one that worked on my Raspberry Pi 4 out of the gate. Everything else just didn't. It it took many weeks of frustration for me to get uh, other things to work. Okay. So, so you did a good job there. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody, and see you later. Bye-bye.